Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today we're going to be talking about spark plug gapping. Here's a brief overview of the, the spark plug, and of course, it has a lot more scientific names to it, but we're going to be pretty brief today and just go off of electrode and ground strap primarily. So here's a traditional plug here, and so uh, up here towards the top, you have the ground strap right here and the electrode right here. And so the gap is the distance between these two right here. Now, um, the rule of thumb is you want this gap as large as it can be without having problems with the car, you know, blowing the spark plug out. And there's different forms of blowing a spark plug. There's literally where it's not threaded in all the way, it's over tightened or it's too loose and it will go up and down and eventually blow itself out of the cylinder head. But what we're talking about is where the actual uh, electrical charge that connects between these two is blown out from mainly from boost pressure if you're running a supercharger. So um, this is a little measuring tool. You've probably seen something like this and this will tell you in inches uh, how big the gap is. Now I don't really like uh, these per se because the way that these work is you put them in the rim and you turn it until it gets you know hard to turn then you know what the gap is but that can scratch up that electrode this is an old plug so I'm not really worried about it but you can see that it can scratch that up as you're as you're uh, you know trying it out so instead I like uh, like these feeler gauges uh, where you could uh, simply just put them in between it and kind of feel the gap so you would know that that one is definitely gapped higher than this 0 0.020, which is a very small gap. But uh, anyway, real quick, the stock gap for the New Edge Mustangs, and other cars are pretty similar, is going to be 0.052 to 0 0.055. And so as you put it on here and kind of go around measuring, you'll see this one does kind of stop right around that 0.055. So this one is a, a factory gap. I believe this was out of my Mach 1. Yeah, this was out of my Mach 1. Um, now, as we were saying with a boosted application, when you have a lot of boost pressure going into the engine, you want to reduce that gap. And the reasoning for that is because then that electrical charge um, is going to have, um, have more likelihood of connecting. Uh, the bigger the gap is, the more likely it is it can be blown out. So um, what you'll want to do is gap these down. And so traditionally, uh, boosted cars are in the 0.032 to 0.035 range, uh, up to about 15 PSI. Once you get into like 17 PSI or so, you want to gap it down even more like 0.028, which is what I'm running on my Cobra. And so um, to... To gap this down, there's a few ways of doing it. Some people will tell you just tap it on a hard surface until it bends it down. I'm not a real big fan of that. In my spark plug video for my Cobra, uh, I put it up against a hard surface and then I pushed on it until it kind of bent and uh, kept taking measurements. My personal advice is if you overextend it where you bent it too far, don't try to bend it back and go again because uh, there's a lot of heat, you know, that uh, these are going through, and it's not worth the cost of the plug to have a, a ground strap break off, um, especially if you have iridium plugs, because then what's happening is, is the piston is within close contact, and the uh, cylinder is firing, the spark plug is firing. You're actually going to have it uh, connect from the electrode to your piston. And uh, some people have even said that the iridium plugs are strong enough that they'll burn a hole into the top of the piston. So, you know, if, for example, here's, here's our piston going up and down. You could imagine without a ground strap, it would be electrically contacting right there in the middle. So you don't want that to happen. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get into uh, gapping this one down just as an example. And here's a tool that you can pick up and, you know, they're all over the place. They're like 10 bucks. Um, and they make more fancy ones. They have some plier ones that I really like, but uh, we have this one for now to show you. 
And uh, so um, with this one, I'm just gonna put a dab of anti-seize on it, on the plug. There we go. Just so that it's a little easier to thread. Okay, but uh, what you do is you just thread it in, well, we're gonna back this out first. But what you're gonna do is just uh, go ahead and start threading the plug into this. You can probably see real fast how this is gonna work. And some plugs only have a few threads at the top. Uh, so you might have, uh, some, that's something to consider. NGK plugs and these ones, they seem to go threads almost all the way down to the base. So we'll see if this one will reach here. It's getting kind of firm. But you can see what we're gonna do is as soon as we uh, contact that ground strap there, we're just gonna be able to turn this one down. And so for an example, I, this is where I would recommend that you just have your feeler gauge is the style. So um, 0 0.020 is very tight. That's uh, We're not gonna be needing that in any application. I just happen to have this one out. So, I mean, if you want, you can kind of set it in there and then uh, compress it until it touches. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna show you here. It takes a little bit of force here, but it is bending as I do this. And I wanna see if I can get you a good shot of it there. But that's about, I mean, from here you almost need, you know, to put this in a, a socket or a vise and, uh, and hold it still. So here's a pair of channel locks that's helping out. Just wanna see if I can get you guys a good shot. I mean, you get the idea, you crank it down, it's gonna close that gap. There we go. Okay, so that is one tight gap. There would be no, I don't think you'd really wanna go that tight with it, but you can see that filler gauge still just kinda of barely fits within there. And so that's how you'd know that you're kinda of right on the money is when you have just the, the slightest amount, you know, so that's about perfect. That's probably right at that 0 0.020. So you can see how tightly gapped that is. That's not something, I mean, there's still enough room in there and eventually that electrode's gonna to start to wear down. Um, but uh, anyway, that's that's how you would gap it if you wanted to gap it down for a supercharged application or something like that. Now, if you're running naturally aspirated without a turbocharger, supercharger, um, you know, no boost, then um, stock gap's most likely gonna be fine for you. Uh, anyway, that's uh, just roughly uh, how you gap a spark plug and uh, they have these kind of tools here for grabbing it and bending it and doing what you want. But um, I mean, they hook in like that to bend it back. Again, personally, for the cost of a spark plug, I wouldn't worry about bending it back and forth. So anyway, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll put some other videos that I've made on spark plugs uh, in the video description. Uh, so thanks for watching.